the virus. John Bryant, you're on the front lines uh, talking to these small business owners, kind of getting a feel for, for how they're faring. And, and I guess that's the biggest question. How, how much of this is going to be structural damage that sticks? How many of these small business owners just aren't going to be able to make it for the next three, few months until we know that, that, that things are going to be better? Well, first of all, Happy New Year to you all, and thank you for focusing all on this important topic. Uh, as you know, Becky, before this started, 96% of all black businesses did not have an employee. They were sole proprietorships. In the middle of this, they didn't have the cash reserves, and uh, close to half of them were sidelined by mid-year. Um, and most jobs in this country, 58%, uh, come from these small businesses. Um, and so it's a cri this is a five-alarm fire in the black community. You've got most people uh, negatively affected by COVID, look like me. Uh, you have one in seven Americans uh, who are uh, experiencing hunger right now. Let me say that again. One in seven Americans are experiencing hunger right now. So you have this dip disconnected conversation. It's our conversation, the investor economy, that's increased, you know, values by equities by a trillion dollars uh, in 2020. Um, and you have the people at the, at the bottom of the ladder who are in a five-alarm fire. Um, I think we, we missed a moment now. Uh, we should have had that first stimulus pivot into a long-term business plan. I call it a new Marshall Plan. We should have given people $1,000 a month to do an internship. So not to sit on your rear end, but do an internship, young person, which is, this is the future now, give these young people who are not in these, these unemployment numbers, people who are out of the economy, who stopped looking for jobs. There's a whole bunch of people not in these unemployment numbers at all, and you have seasonal workers that temporarily pop this. I think we should give them $1,000 a month to go do an internship in the private sector, in government or in community, uh, because this is the bench strength of the playoff games the rest of our lives. And and that should and give them $1,000 plus unemployment until this is over, until we have vaccinations in everybody's arms and the, and the economy is showing signs of life again, because I think we've, we've got a, I think we're underplaying our hands and we're talking about a, basically a payday loan when we really need a, a Marshall Plan. Hey, hey, Rick, I'll come back to you just because you brought it up a little earlier today. I mean, we are spending lots of money. There's a huge amount of, of, of stimulus and aid that's going out into the economy. I guess the question is, are we spending it the right way? Exactly. That is the only question. You know, nobody, w w any moral character, would not understand there are people hurting out there. So to object to some of these plans, you look like a Scrooge. But that isn't, and it shouldn't be the case. 5,600 pages. I question, maybe the Marshall Plan is in there. Has anybody read it? The, the problem is, is that we think, in hindsight, that when we look back to all the things they did on some of the first big stimulus votes, that they were actually going to try to come up with all these creative ideas. No, that's not what I saw. I, I saw a hurry up, vote, get the money out. Uh, you know, we listen to Treasury Secretary Mnuchin say, we'll do the best we can. But getting it out fast is the priority. Now we go back and we say, well, we should have put this in there, we should have put that in there. It sounds good. I will stick to my same comments I made during the credit crisis, okay? The U.S. government and the Federal Reserve are not good at getting liquidity at very specific places. Because what ends up happening is they look at all these people in need, you know, they're like geraniums a half a mile away. They get the fire hose out and then they start spraying. Their heart's in the right place, a lot of liquidity ends up in the wrong place, and all the pork gets put in. We all know what's going on here. And it isn't about helping people. It's about how much falls through the cracks and the fact that I don't want to give my grandkids a 150 grand bill. I really don't. I'm done. We it's don't. Brian, like, have, you, I, go ahead. No, we don't have a business plan, Becky. Uh, we, we don't have a business plan, a long-term plan for America's future. We don't have a la The ladder is broken. You have this disconnected uh, sort of workforce economy that's extraordinarily hurting right now. And you have the investor economy that says, what's the problem? And you've got Washington that's dealing with the urgent and not what's in, important. After the Marshall, after World War II, we had an apprenticeship for everybody who, ca who, who could work, for a job for the future. You had a mortgage for a new home, and you had as much education to shut down people's throat. Where is, I'm not talking about pork here. I'm talking about investments. We don't need any more pork. We, in fact, I think we, I, I think we really need to be pivoting to long-term investments that re-spark the economy. But 70% of this economy, as you know, Becky, is consumer spending. 
So even the money we're putting in the economy is going to end back, going to go right back uh, into growing the economy. We need a plan that includes internships and apprenticeships at scale. Find me 535 men and women that could actually create a plan without ending up with their hands on each other's throats, and I totally would agree with you. But that's not the real world we live in right now. No, I am. Rick, where was the uh, Rick? Where was the uh, Rick? Where was the leadership from the White House? I think that there was a. Really good excuse. You know, to come you bring up it to the White plans. House, you bring it to Trump. Th let me, There's no let me, real leadership oh, anywhere, yeah. Leesman. There's none anywhere. Yeah, you go hit your hot button. I get it. And I'm sure you want well, to be in your time usually being nicer in, a, in the future. In in a typical in a typical administration, the executive the typical situation, the executive oh, what, branch would typical? lead on this. Well, what I kind give of, them. What are you talking about? Uh, the, the, really? the administration okay, before this. Wait a second. Let's do this. You brought up the idea of you 500 of them guys. Let me finish here. Guys, guys okay, hold, let me, hold on. Let me make hold one on, point. I'm going to make one point. Hold on. Rick, I'm going to make one point. Steve, just wait. Just wait. We just had a conversation. Can we have the five of us not have hands on each other's throats? Let's have a serious conversation. Steve, go ahead and make your point. I'm going to make one very quick point, which is that the administration and Congress are to be excused for the first round of stimulus. They did it in an emergency basis. It was perfectly excusable that there were inefficiencies in it. The idea that 10 months later we do not have a strong plan and a targeted plan that gets at some of the issues that John Hope Ryan's talking about, that targets aid at the people who need it most, that is the most, that is a much more efficient way of targeting that aid, instead of this talk about $2,000 checks or even $600 checks to anybody, is to my mind inexcusable. I put some of the blame on the administration, I put some of the blame on Congress, but the idea that we don't have a targeted plan at this point is what is inexcusable. I, I, think, I think everybody can agree on that. I think the, Steve's the absolutely have... right on that. I think Steve's absolutely right on that. And we know, and in these numbers today, there is a targeted group that need help. And those are the unemployed. And their benefits temporarily expired at the end of last week. And they will expire again on mm -hmm. March 11th. So we know we're not going to have herd immunity at that point. And a plan would have been better designed that focused on those people and that extended the runway for those unemployment benefits to the point where we could reasonably expect the economy to get back to some semblance of normality. Uh, and that is six months or so away, uh, and we gave those people two and a half months. So that's not hard, Rick. It doesn't require rocket science. It, it, it's straightforward, and we should have done it, and it was a major failing. Quick last points in from, from John Bryan and then from Rick. John? So, Becky, the Problem Solvers Caucus, actually, of Republicans and Democrats, is a great example of Republicans and Democrats working together. And they're the reason that we have the current stimulus plan. So I, I respectfully disagree that you don't have people who can work together. The screaming that is being done in this program is part of the problem. we got to act like adults if we want people to be adults. Watch how you live your life. It may be the only Bible that anybody else reads. we got to stop with the screaming. We tried, we tried this. Uh, uh, public policy by the seat of your pants approach for four years, it has not worked. We need best practices, not somebody's idea of the day. I would argue that we've been trying this screaming match for longer than four years, but, hmm. but Rick, what, what do you think? What can we look for in 2021? You said exactly my point, Becky. See, the problem is that at the most current crisis, we funnel all the garbage that we've done, all the stuff under the rug, and we put it in this current bucket. The reality is everything John's talked about is absolutely correct. We were talking about that in 2000, 2003, 2005. For sure in 2008, 9, and 10, we've been talking about these things for decades. What gets done? We sometimes throw more money at it. You know, the real problem is education and personal responsibility. That's what's changed in this country. We spend a boatload on education. Go by any major high school in any major state, and let's ask kids who the vice president was last term, who's the head of the Federal Reserve. You know, let's ask them some of these questions and see what the answers are. Because it'll be very easy to see why we need to take care of people more, because we have allowed them the non-luxury of not being able to take care of themselves better. And that's really what we need to deal with. And these aren't new issues. And they're not COVID-related issues. But when you have crisis, these things get brought up. 
and I understand that. And we really do need to help people. It's really a shame they just couldn't vote on giving people checks as a standalone bill, but obviously that's too adultish.